Welcome to this pre-Christmas um, in brief. I'm joined this afternoon by Anita Holt, my colleague from RSC Northwest, and my name is uh, Lynn Lau. Good afternoon, Lynn. Hi, Anita. Um, so the session is predominantly about a tool called RAPTOR, which stands for Review and Plan for Technology in Action. And the session overview is we're first of all going to tell you a little bit about what Raptor is and how it fits in with your self-assessment processes and your quality improvement planning. Then we're actually going to show you the tool itself and have a discussion on how we measure impact. And then there's going to be an activity for you where hopefully you will all share some good practice that you are doing some things with effectively with technology in your own organizations. And then we'll be talking about uh, what next. So first of all, we'd like to, uh, I'm going to start the recording now. Sorry, we've already started the recording. Um, I'm going to turn my video off now so that it doesn't distract for the rest of the session and improves the, uh, the bandwidth. So first of all, we'd like to know a little bit about you and uh, your role. So could you please use the voting buttons in the panel above the participants list to tell us a little bit about your role, A, B, C, D, or E? So it looks like uh, predominantly we've got um, managers in here this afternoon with a sprinkling of uh, practitioners, assessors and learning support staff as well. So thank you for that. In addition, perhaps you could tell us as well which area you work in. So if you could use those voting buttons again. Right, so we've got quite a few from FE or Sixth Form College. We've got uh, some work-based learning and some adult and community learning. Thank you for that. So let's get started then. And first of all, uh, what might be the reason that you would want to actually explore this tool? Well, for most of us, as we are under the Ofsted inspection regime, then we'll know that the new common inspection framework has specific references to technology, how it's used to support learning outside the classroom, how it's used effectively uh, as a resource to support teaching learning assessment, and particularly how it's used in assessment. So those are sort of the drivers behind um, why we might want to have a tool such as this to embed into our self-assessment reports and quality improvement processes. So, um, I'm going to ask Anita now to uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, what Raptor is. Well, thanks, Lynn. Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. The idea of the tool really is to help you identify and evaluate uh, the, um, uh, and improve on the contribution that technology is paying to teaching, learning, and assessment. It kind of provides a way of evaluating the impact of technology and also helps you to assess the value of maybe your investment in technology. We spend a lot of money on technology not only in time, but also in financial uh, areas. So Raptor helps you to sort of ask the questions of whether this investment in technology is actually worth it. 
Is it making a contribution? Is there any relevance to the technology being used? Is it technology for technology's sake? And in what way are you using it and how well are you using it? The way the Raptor tool works is broken down into two themes, and these themes relate to the Common Inspection Framework, and we'll hear a little bit more about that later on. But initially, we're looking at teaching and learning and assessment, and leadership and management, and it breaks down the criteria for this into 28 key questions. Thanks, Anita. We're going to have a look at those questions um, shortly, and there'll be an opportunity to collaborate and share good practice. This next slide really tells us a little bit about why, uh, how Raptor has been designed as a tool. It's really not about the technology, but it's been future-proofed by not referring to, the questions don't refer to particular technologies, but more to uh, the contribution to specific behaviours that technology can uh, bring. So, for instance, technology can support the development of digital literacy and employability skills. Um, here we've got, as well, technology supporting um, learner voice and responsiveness. So, use of social media, perhaps, in your organisation. Um, and also, we've got, re uh, up here, we've got um, reputation. How can technology and possibly have an impact on the reputation of your organization. So for instance, are, are you using technology very effectively? Is an organization close to you and in competition with you using it not quite so effectively? Um, and that might actually be a contributing factor to your recruitment and enrollment of learners if you've got a very positive um, use and innovative and effective use of technology. So, all of these areas are areas where technology can contribute without being specific about the particular type of technology. Yes, Lynn, and the tool basically is looking at um, the SIF criteria, as you mentioned earlier. So it, it breaks down the SIF criteria and it's asking specific questions to evaluate the use of technology. As you can see from the graphic at the top of the screen there, you can see the SIF criteria, for example, when encouraging learning, uh, when encouraging independent learning. But it's looking at how does technology help to foster independent learning? And as Lynn said, it's not being particularly specific about any particular piece of technology. In this particular example, it looks at um, how effectively is the VLE in supporting your learners? To what extent is social media being exploited? So the tool is trying to use the same language as, as Ofsted. Right, can you tell us a little bit about the process then, Anita? Yes, the process of the tool is um, really the idea of it becomes part of the self-assessment process. And as you can see from this diagram, you can see how the, the tool is being broken down. First of all, you're looking at the two themes, and these themes are based on uh, the SIF criteria. And then each of the themes are broken down into nine sections. Now, within these sections, there's the context of uh, how the use of technology is meant. And there's also the current trends. So it's trying to build in with what's actually happening at the moment. There's 28 key questions which you're going to ask yourselves about how you're using technology. There's also some specific illustrations. So for example, um, you might ask a question with regards to how is uh, the VLE used to support learners. And there'll be some illustrations there showing you the different ways in which the VLE could be used without being too specific. So with it being mapped into the, the SIF criteria, it's easy for you to then transfer it to your self-assessment review and also then easy for it to become part of the quality improvement plan. So the rest of it is, it, the key is quality improvement approach and primarily it's designed with the self-assessment review in mind. Some other applications of Raptor might be to help you to prepare for inspection and also to, act, to assess or identify the contribution technology is making to particular projects if you were looking for funding. Uh, in the current funding that's just been available, uh, some of our learning providers use Raptor 
to identify what they were going to do with the funding and how it was going to improve their current practice. And it also helps you in, in developing your technology strategy. Okay, thank you, Nita. So in a moment, we're going to, I'm going to um, share my screen with you, and we're actually going to look at two versions of the tool which are available for you. The first one is um, a whole Moodle course for those of you that have uh, a Moodle virtual learning environment. And you can actually download the whole course um, from our RSC Moodle. And all of the links um, for these resources should have been transferred to you on joining the session. And we will also send you, after the session, links to all of the resources and put some stuff onto our VLE for you. So one version of the tool is as a Moodle course. But for those of you that haven't got access to um, a virtual learning environment such as Moodle, there is also a Word version of the tool, which is also available from this same download link that we'll make available to you. So we're going to have a look at that now. So just bear with me for a moment while I share my screen with you. Right, so hopefully you can see my screen now. And here in the downloadable courses section, you can see the uh, area where you can download the self-assessment tool. And all you have to do is click here in this block to download it, and you can get a zipped version of the tool. So let's have a quick look through it. The top section here gives you an introduction to it and uh, guidance, detailed guidance on how to use the tool. There is um, a news and announcements section, so you can communicate with everybody involved in the process. And here is the, the document library, which I'll just show you briefly. So in the document library, you've got full guidance notes. You've got the 28 questions. And for those of you who haven't got a virtual learning environment, you've got this Word version of the tool as well. And this version you can either use by putting it on a shared area or on your intranet, or if you've got something like SharePoint, you could actually deploy it through there. So those are the, uh, the guidance and support. There are also, in the response store, there are documents here for each of the nine sections and areas to respond to the uh, questions in those nine sections. I'm going to take you to a particular section now. So all of the sections follow the same format. So section A questions here, there are five questions relating to how technology is used to inspire, encourage, and challenge learners. So in each section, there will be the questions. And in this case, there are the five questions. In the second section, there will be what specific things learning technology can offer, what the current trends are in using technologies, and of course, this is future-proof because if you use this tool, you can actually put your, uh, as trends change, you can actually update these sections and put your own specific things in. Here are some next exemplars of effective use of technology in this context. So for instance, how might technology inspire learning? You've got a whole uh, series of examples here. How might technology encourage collaborative learning? Again, some ideas here, and so on. So each of the, section, the nine sections follows a similar format. And what I'm going to do now is take you to, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and take you back again. Hopefully, that's given you a flavor for the tool itself. And um, Anita's just going to tell us, before we get started on the activity, um, a little bit about how you respond to these questions. 
Okay, so when you look at the questions, there'll be three headings. So for example, there might be a question on uh, how learners collaborate. And this might be something you might say, well, okay, we've got a VLA, and we use this for learners to collaborate. And then the next section is asking you the question, so what? What is this actually doing to the learning experience? How is it helping the learners improve? So you, you're sort of not only saying what you're doing, you're also questioning, so what? What, what, you know, what is the point of that particular activity? So if we didn't have this particular, um, if we didn't have a VLE, what could, we, what could we do? Could we still do this without the VLE? Uh, and then the next part of it would be um, the next side of it. So what's going to happen next? How are you going to improve that? How are you going to take yourself to uh, further with that particular example? For example, you may have something, uh, we use social media, we've got a Facebook presence. Well, it might be, the question might be, so what, you've got a Facebook presence, what are you actually doing with it? You might say Facebook is used for all learners to collaborate outside the classroom. Uh, they confer this way. This is this is encouraged learners to collaborate by 10% more than they were last year, for example. Uh, and then what next? You might say, I'm going to we're going to roll out Facebook pages throughout the college, and each department or curriculum area is going to have their own page. So that could be something. That could be an example of the sort of the idea of the methodology that we've got behind the form. So the idea of the types of evidence, I think uh, Lynn's going to discuss this with you. Thank you, Anita. So as we know, there's different types of evidence that we use to support our self-assessment processes. And this might be quantitative evidence, so showing sort of improvements in achievement or retainment or um, success rates, for instance. Um, we have qualitative data. Maybe we get that from um, feedback from learners, um, comments that they make on surveys and for learner voice. But for um, the Raptor questions, it's recommended um, that we use something called a double negative statement to gain an insight into how technology has changed or improved um, the way we do things. So we're going to say a little bit more about this um, double negative statement now before we get started on our activity. So this is about the so what, how can we measure impact once we've identified some use of technology in our organisation. So here, for example, we've got um, a set of nine learner entitlement statements. You may have different statements in your, your organisations, but these are just used as an example. So how would we um, measure impact here using the double negative statement? We ask ourselves the question, what would not have happened if we hadn't done this? So for instance, if we take entitlement, learner entitlement statement four, students can continue to learn during periods of agreed absence. So the Raptor evidence might be, if we hadn't introduced Moodle, 20 of our students on long-term sickness during the term would not have been able to stay on course and on track and achieve. So if we hadn't had Moodle, then this wouldn't have happened. Another example is uh, for learner entitlement statement six. Where desirable, learners will use their own software and hardware to access teaching and demonstrate learning. And if we asked ourselves the question, what would not have happened if we hadn't set up a campus Wi-Fi system, students wouldn't have been able to use their own mobile devices to support teaching and learning. So hopefully that illustrates with those two examples how we can get some responses to the so what once we've identified our use of technology in a particular area. OK, so now we're going to start to use a collaborative tool ourselves to something called TitanPad, which some of you may have used before. And we're going to ask you uh, to share some good practice with effective use of technology for four different questions. 
just before I do that, I'm going to make sure that you all know um, what to do once we go into the activity. So I'm going to share my desktop with you again. And we're going to look at, and hopefully you can see, a collaborative pad called Titan Pad. And this is for uh, question number six of those 28 questions. The question is at the top and it's highlighted in purple. When encouraging independent learning, how does technology help to foster independent learning that takes place beyond the learning session? So the first part of your response is here. What are you currently doing? And all you have to do is click here and start typing. And then, once you've identified some good practice, what you're currently doing with technology to support learning beyond the classroom, then you can add, if you want, how do you know what effect it's having? What evidence have you got of that? And so what? Ask yourself perhaps that double negative statement. So we've got four different collaborative pads for you. And I'm just going to take you on to the questions now. So, as I say, there are four questions. The first three questions, 6, 7 and 18, refer to uh, teaching, learning and assessment, where technology can make a difference. For those of you who are managers, you might want to look at question 25, which is um, in the effective leadership and management section where um, we're looking at how does technology contribute to the planning and delivery of professional development to staff, managers and governors. Question six then, how does technology help to foster independent learning that takes place beyond the learning session? We've already had a look at that pad. Question seven, how effective is your virtual learning environment, if you have one, in supporting your learners? And question 18, how effective is the use of technology in assessment? Now, because the, we were expecting about 30 people in the room, we've actually divided people up so that there weren't too many people going to be collaborating on one pad at once. So what we've done is divide the questions up according to your surname. And what we'd like you to do in a moment is click on the appropriate hyperlink and go to that pad and answer um, the questions on that pad by sharing good practice with how you use technology. We're going to give you about five minutes or so to do this activity and Kevin and Anita and myself will be looking at the pad and supporting where we can if people seem to be running out of ideas and then at the end we will try and share um, what you've done and everything that everybody contributes will be available to you after the session. So would you like to now um, click on the link according to where we've put you. If you really feel that that question is not for you um, and as we haven't got quite so many people um, in the room as we expected now, um, maybe those of you involved in quality and management might prefer to look at question 25. Okay, so I'm going to um, allow you to do that now. So we've got about five minutes to do this activity, please. I'm going to... Okay, so that was five minutes and I'm going to just now carry on um, sharing my desktop with you. So I'm going to go back to, uh, and we'll look at perhaps Titan Pad 6 question first. So how does technology help to foster independent learning that takes place beyond the classroom? So let's see um, what some of you put on Titan Pad 6. Okay. Um, not a lot here at the moment. Oh yes, we've got something a bit further down there. Oh, a lot more. Okay, so we're not going to spend time reading all of these for all of the pads, but we've actually got um, stuff about using Prezi, 
survey monkey to answer questions on what they've learnt. We've got some adult community um, engagement using the VRE, very effectively by the look of it, for ITQs. And looking at impact seems to have been very positive. And we've got some plans there for um, how they're going to increase the impact as well. Okay, I'm going to have a look now at um, question seven. And question seven was about how effective is your VLE in supporting learning. So here somebody is using um, the VLE to actually have a two-way communication with learners um, to email them and using e-portfolios and workbooks, handouts on the VLE, quizzes, etc. I think they're really about how they know what effect it's having. Um, I'll look at question 18. Now, there wasn't much in that one. I don't know whether people had opted out of that one for a reason, um, but how is how effective is technology for assessment? So somebody's using Blackboard there to deliver online assessments. Okay, I've put some questions in the chat pane there about um, do you use technology to capture evidence of assessment using learners' own devices? What about e-portfolios for those of you that use them? And just look at question 25, which was the uh, leadership and management question. So how does technology contribute to planning and delivery of professional development for staff, managers and governors? So somebody here is saying they've got tutor support information on the VLE, training dates, training resources, uploaded after CPD sessions. Okay, nobody's mentioned there um, using um, perhaps flipped learning resources for flipped CPD for mandatory training maybe. And we've got another example here use PICS as a management tracking and funding system and only just beginning to look at the VLE. Right, looking at cloud-based tools. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing there now. Thank you for your contributions. Um, and I'll just say that if you want some uh, more ideas about how you can use technology to um, provide evidence for using the Raptor tool for a particular question. I've put a couple of slides in here, ways in which technology might foster independent learning. And these are another one here for this question on how you use your VLE. There's a couple of slides there with ideas about what you might be doing. But of course, your RSC is probably a very good um, port of call to find out about what you could be doing if you aren't already um, using technology effectively in those areas. Again, for assessment, there's some ideas there about how technology could be used to support assessment. And you can have a look at these after the session. And for leadership and management, as I mentioned, maybe you could be using your VLE to actually get um, staff as learners onto your VLE and put CPD activities on them for them to work through themselves as a flipped CPD exercise. Okay, so thank you for that, and um, now over to you, um, Anita. Okay, so um, you saw, you've sort of seen what the Raptor tool can do, and to make the Raptor tool be successful within your organisation, for it to have an effect in contributing towards the uh, self-assessment process, it really does need buy-in from senior leaders. This is not something that should be given to the IT department. And uh, unfortunately, I've shown Raptor Tool to um, organizations who said, oh, we'll just give this to IT. It's not IT. IT are not the people who are delivering teaching and learning. So they're not the people who, who know how uh, the tools are being used and how the technology is being used. They know what technology is there, but not how it's being used within the organizations. It really needs to have a, a dedicated lead someone who's going to pull it all together, somebody who's going to be uh, able to sort of analyze the information and store the information somewhere where everybody can look at. Um, 
So people need to have an agreed leader. And really think curriculum leaders need to take responsibility just the same way as they would for a self-assessment review. They need to just think of this as part of the self-assessment, not something that they need to do separately, but they really need to do this to inform their self-assessment review. So once the uh, information has been gathered from each of the uh, curriculum areas, there needs to be somewhere where the information can go. So you might want to put this, like we, we discussed before, it might be something that you put on your VLE, or might be something that you put on SharePoint, or, or live binders, or maybe a Google Doc, somewhere where people can access the information and add to the information. Because, for example, within an organization, in one department, some people may not be aware of how technology is being used. In, in the beauty department, there may be some practitioners who are using technology in a particular way, but not everybody may know about these things. Uh, Lynn's put some ideas on the screen there with regards to uh, Dropbox, uh, a central place on uh, Mahara or as part of the VLA. But I really think the idea of having a central place really works because it also helps you to share good practice. So not only are you sort of helping to identify so when maybe opposite come, we can say, oh, this is how we're using technology, this is the different ways people are using it. But to actually give other people ideas. So I might work in construction and I might see something that they're doing over a motor vehicle. I can maybe apply that to my practices as well. Uh, so when things are available, it's really great to sort of get some good practice going along. I think one of the benefits as well of using this tool is that it, it's not so much the product, it's the process and the discussion in the face-to-face -face sessions maybe, bringing up these questions at, on a regular basis maybe at a team meeting and having a sharing what's going on with technology in your particular area. Um, as you say, to, to develop sort of communities of practice and transfer ideas from, from one curriculum area to another curriculum area. So it works best if you've got buy-in from a whole organization, obviously, but that's not to say that it can't actually be used by uh, individual course teams or individual curriculum areas to actually improve their practice and reflect on what they do and see how they can improve the uh, learner experience. So if you do go through this process, and the RSC can certainly help you and support you through um, the process in terms of um, deploying it, how you're going to manage it, and what you're going to do with the evidence, you might actually, um, and looking at some of the, the collaborative paths that we've just looked at, you might have um, very little evidence in a for a particular question. Um, that might mean that you need to seriously look at how you find out about what use of technology is going on inside your organization. And maybe you haven't got much uh, use of technology at all. So that gives you something to work on. Or you might have, at the other extreme, lots of ideas uh, and lots of quality statements to support and know that you're having an impact with that sort of technology. Um, so there are sort of four areas, really, which indicate um, how you might progress from there, depending on whether you have gaps in your evidence um, and not many, um, not much evidence at all of effective use of technology. So it gives you a starting point from which to develop your quality improvement plans. I think it's also a good feeling of informing staff development as well. A lot of the time people put on staff development sessions uh, with, with kind of not being informed with, with what people want. So, you know, if there are gaps, it might be something that you can say, well, there's not a lot of people using the interactive whiteboards in an interactive way. So, uh, but there's some great practice going on in the construction area. Let's put some staff development on and share their ideas. So that could be another way of using the Raptor tool. Yeah, exactly. Um, so hopefully what we've done this afternoon is raise your awareness of a tool that you can use for uh, reviewing what you already do with technology and planning for how you can build on that and develop as part of your quality improvement and self-assessment processes. Um, in terms of what happens next, um, obviously you can get in touch with your regional support centre uh, and we can support you with using this tool. You can download the tool for your own organisation from the regional support centre's Moodle, as I've shown you, and there's a short web address there. 
In addition, in the files that we've um, sent you when you joined sec the session, you should have received a Word document with lots of links. Some of you may be aware of, for instance, Ofsted's resource on effective use of VLEs and what they've um, seen in organizations that they've liked. And that might give you some ideas if your VLE is something that you would like to develop. I've also put lots of other useful links in there for quality managers and people involved with um, lesson observations about how they can identify what is effective practice with use of technology. Um, also, just to finish off with, um, our next in brief will be uh, in the new year. We're not having one in January because I think it's scheduled to be the first day back for most people. So we've decided to postpone that till February. And that's going to be entitled, uh, What's Flipping Next? And it's going to build on a previous webinar that we did on uh, flipped learning and taking it to the next level. Um, and on exiting from the session, um, you will be sent a link to an evaluation form, which we'd appreciate if you could actually uh, complete that before you leave. So that would be really good. Thank you. So it just remains for me to say, um, wish you all a happy Christmas and New Year break. Thank you for participating this afternoon. Thank you, Anita, as well, for, for your contributions. And also, thank you, Kevin, for your support um, in the background. So thank you very much, and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.